you already know my conclusion, don't you? I ended up buying it. So you might expect me to spend the next 10 minutes justifying my purchase to you. But that's not my intention. I will explain to you why I bought it, and you'll see what my problem is and how this applies to it. But I'm not familiar with your problems. What I can promise you is that by the end of this video, you will be familiar with this product enough to determine whether or not it applies to your own problems. There was a junk tool outlet by where I used to live, and they sold these, these tools, these grip tools, and I bought them at first, some of them because they were cheap but some of them turned out to be gems. These are $1.99, best needle nose I've ever owned. I have a dozen or so of them. You do have to end up epoxying the handles back on because that's like one of the most annoying things in the world. But aside from that, it's a great tool. And in general, I'm not really one to endorse name brands, but I like these tools in general. They do, they do pretty well, they hold up pretty well, and this doesn't seem to be any exception. I, I was persuaded enough by its design to give it a try, and so what I will do here is modify it a bit, and you will come to understand it as I will. It looks like, let me give you a better focus. I like the shape of the head. It's not going to be good for splitting, but it's thin enough, once it's sharpened, that it should do well to remove some good chips. They claim that it's a fiberglass handle, but it really seems more like, well, polypropylene to me. Maybe there's fiberglass inside of it, but in either case, it seems strong enough that I can really put this through hell before it'll break. This is useless, it's just to cover up the shoddy work, but it's not really shoddy work. They shoved it in to the eye and then filled it with some type of epoxy or resin or something. Its balance is way more towards the head than this. Remember this, but I filled it with BBs. Now, <laughs> my intention was to get another one of these junk, what are they called, camp axes? They're all the same thing, probably even manufactured from in the same place, but they come under different brand names. And apparently the head slipped off on enough of the Walmart ones that it poses an injury. But, but it's a junk hatchet. You should know better. It's, it, there's a potential for it to break. But you want to trust in your stuff, and this seems like it's pretty secure. And it was only a few dollars more than that, but... I wanted something different, A. B, this handle design is not the best thing. Um, the visibility. That ends up getting lost in the brush. It's awful to not have something that you can see. But at first glance, I have to sharpen it, certainly. Uh, I might want to try to take some material off the bottom. It seems a bit like there's too much. I also might want to round it a bit more. I'm starting to develop a preference for round these, any sorts of narrowings in the geometry or, or square edges start to bother my hand. This is certainly stupid, a safety reminder that I don't need. It should be filled in with epoxy or burned away. We'll see what we can do with it as we modify this. First, let's run it through a test and see how it does out of the box. Okay, let's at least be fair and give it a support log. But I don't even know why I'm doing this. I mean, you can't expect to get any sort of cut when, when the axe looks like, or when the hatchet looks like that. 
this is just a waste of time. Okay, here's a nice light duty task. This is easy work for a hatchet. But you can tell it doesn't want to cut. It's like hitting ice. I can't believe how much it wants to glance off. Jeez. <laughs> For comparison, this is semi-sharp. Yeah, I, I like using this, <laughs> or a chainsaw. Okay, so what is going on here? I mean, this thing is just unusable, and we just spent 14 of our hard-earned dollars on it. Well, the devil is in the details, so look up close. Look at the shape of the grind. Think about what an axe is. It's a cutting tool. You can't cut if it rubs before it can make the cut. Pretty much any axe or hatchet that you buy is going to need a better grind put on it. I think they do it for liability. So it doesn't mean that this is a bad product just because it needs to be ground again. In general you can think of the edge as being the tighter it is the more it cuts. The less tight it is the less it cuts. But wait there's more. The more the edge gets tight like this, the easier it dulls also. So there's that to consider. The more it goes like this, the longer the edge lasts, and the better it is for splitting. So you have to like balance all of those things. It's a juggling. Eh. For a cheap hatchet like this, I would just be happy if it cut at all. So we're just going to take the bump off. We want it to do something like this. So let's turn this into this. There's a million ways we can go about it. Perspective. You are watching a video about modifying a $14 camping axe. So there's a possibility that you're a noob here. I don't want to insult you, but let's review. There are two distinct procedures, power tools and non-power tools. Now, you, if you're a purist, you might go about it with all non-power tools, but I don't like that because it takes too long and I want to be productive. So first, power tools. Right now, the edge looks something like this up close. And we want to knock this corner away like so. In doing so, it's safe to use power tools down here where we want to blend it away, but we want to stay away from that with power tools because it could get it hot and ruin the temper. So up here, keep it to the file or the stone. Under the using electricity category, the belt sander is one popular option, but I prefer an angle grinder like this. I'll start by removing the bulk of the material with this grinding wheel attachment and then I'll switch to a flap disc like this for fine tuning. I'm feeling it the entire time. I never want it to become too hot to touch. Only comfortably warm. And then it's back and forth mirroring the same thing I just did on this side.
this side is a little more awkward because I want my flap sander skimming off of it this way so that it doesn't get caught. It is still dull at this point, but we can just use hand tools to finish it up by putting an edge on it. It has a much better shape now. To me, filing is the best part. I don't know why. It just feels like this is where it comes together. Like you, you really start to see progress here. I already have this side done and it's already starting to develop an edge. It's just a tiny bit sharp from the other side. But now watch as I draw the edge back to here and really tighten it up. That line may be barely perceptible. And when I'm done, it should be invisible. But notice that it's parallel with the very edge. And that's the art of it because this is a complex curve and a person can learn to follow that but a machine still has trouble with it. In my opinion that's as far as you need to take it to do hatchet work. That is plenty sharp enough for anything that I'm going to be doing out in the pack. But we can take it a step further with two things, a stone and a leather strop, which is just an old belt in this case. And that brings us to my least favorite part, using a stone. It's not that bad, it's just tedious. And it can also be uncomfortable. You could do it in the vise if you want, but half of the battle is definitely finding and settling into a comfortable spot. Usually, by the time I've figured out what my comfortable spot is, I'm about done. So you can do this with water or oil, but I'm using dish soap. Why? Because dish soap is a chemical bridge between water and oil, and it works lovely. It makes a great slurry. So I'm keeping a really low angle, and my goal is to make that line that I had before disappear. I want to blend it completely out. I have paid almost no attention to the outside edge because it just naturally sort of happens as you go. At least that's the way that I think about it when I'm doing this. I've switched to a finer grade. Notice that this side of the stone is much smoother than the other. And now that I'm almost done, as I get near the edge, I don't apply as much pressure. In fact, it's only the weight of the stone at the very edge. Now, of course, there's no limit to how far we can take this. And I do think that using soap is my favorite way to use a stone. Also, the cleanup is so easy. It's amazing how much soap a dry rag can absorb. I'm now finishing it off with an even softer and finer stone. And with that, I've come to the limit of both my skill and patience. So let's see how it turned out. Well, that'll certainly do. Time for a test. A good general purpose hatchet has two primary functions, and those are splitting and chopping. So first, splitting.
Here we have some fresh cherry. Chainsawed about four or five days ago. So far, that's about what I expected. I mean, this is a brutal task for a hatchet this size. <laughs> so, in that respect, that, that's a great little hatchet. The other thing that I'll be asking of this little guy is to chop. So let's take it outside and run it through the same tests that I ran it through in the beginning and find out how it performs. Also, I'm not going to modify anything on the plastic until I put a couple of hours in on this to find out what I think about it. After about an hour of abuse, so far so good. You know, a hatchet that's sharp and functioning well is a pleasure to use. If you don't have the compulsion to go get loppers or a chainsaw, then your hatchet's doing all right. to work without gloves here just so I get a better feel for this hatchet. I'm certainly not always the best at explaining myself and I'm rarely knowledgeable on the topic that I discuss but I do my best to provide you with what it feels like, what the feel for what I'm doing. And if I capture that even a little bit, then I count that as a success. In this case, there's a certain satisfaction with using a tool that's been well prepared and it's functional. When it makes a nice slice, it, it's just a lovely experience. My opinion, for what it's worth, you could do a lot worse than this. If you're going to buy one of these, forget it. Get the green one instead. With respect to the metal, it's not hard, it's not soft, it held, a, it held an edge pretty well, better than this. This is how it looks after all that work. How sharp is it? Uh, it's still dangerous sharp. With respect to the handle, comparable to a wooden handle, after quite a few hours, I had very little shock from using this handle. It wasn't as uncomfortable up here in this narrowed neck as I had thought it would be. In fact, it didn't bother me at all. The part that bothered me the most was down here where it narrowed, so I think this should be a little bit more round. And it's definitely too long here on the butt. But that I can deal with. This I can't. Also, this bothered me a little bit, but surprisingly the thing that bothered me more was the traction texture that they gave. It's just totally unnecessary in a hatchet. 
you, it just wears out your hand more. So congratulations, Grip. I will say that this hatchet is worth every, every penny in my opinion. In fact, uh, out of curiosity and because I think I owe it to all of you, I'm going to go buy another one and we'll find out what's inside. I'm not going to destroy this one because I've already put enough work into it that it's worth keeping, but I want to see just what's in there. I'm in one of those big box stores for sporting goods, but you can get one on Amazon as well. Oh, hi. I didn't see you there. A few weeks has actually gone by, and while that time has passed, I've grown pretty comfortable with this. I've been using it mostly for kindling. The only thing that I would like to revise about my opinion of this is the safety label. It does annoy me because I end up holding it right here and it bothers my thumb a bit. All things considered, I can't complain about it. It has a fair amount of experience on it now and it still has an edge. I have not sharpened it yet. But before we do anything to this one, let's take a look inside that one. Step one, let's find out just how tough it is. is rough. Ah, okay, I can't do it anymore. <laughs> Believe it or not, it still doesn't feel as though it's going to break. It did crack though. It did the same thing on both sides. Can you make that out? But that crack may just be superficial. If it is in fact fiberglass on the inside, that may have just flexed and allowed the outer shell to crack but we won't really know until we get in there, so let's drill next. Before you accuse me of being wasteful, consider that this hatchet has an eye that runs the whole way through, so I can rehandle this and save the head. Okay, based on feel, appearance, and smell, I would definitely say that there's some. this is a resin on top and it's fiberglass on the inside. The white powder is definitely indicative of fiberglass, but let's keep going. This is really tough. It's really tough stuff. And this is not a sponsored video. I've never done a sponsored video because that would affect my impartiality. I'm going to have to cut it off because by the time I'm done drilling this out, there'll be nothing left to, to it and we won't be able to identify exactly how it's constructed. So let's make a cut. Wow, not so tough now. The hacksaw goes through it like a warm knife through butter. Well. It can keep no secrets from us now. I would have expected the fiberglass core to be a little bit bigger than that, but all things considered, that's sufficient. It seems as though they pressed it into place while there was liquid resin all over it. You can still make some out right there. And it did a pretty good job. I took it down to the bare metal with the grinder so that we can take a closer look at this eye. The eye on this hatchet is definitely a positive because it's generous. But the best thing about the size of this eye is the fact that the difference between the top and the bottom is about three and a half millimeters, which means the top of the eye is bigger and so it enables you to wedge it in tighter. Next up. 
handle modification. If you listen carefully, that scratchiness suggests to me that the fiberglass core goes the whole way to about a half of an inch from the bottom here. I'm going to leave the length alone, but as I've said, this narrowing bothers me a little bit. So I would like to round this over just a little bit by taking a little bit of the length off. Something like that. Before I do anything, I'm going to test to see if this is actually a thermoplastic. What I mean is that some plastics can be heated up, moved around, and then they cool off. Polyethylene is a classic case. I think it melts at something like 315 degrees, and it becomes like taffy. So you can just move it around, reposition it, and then let it solidify again. If that's the case with our handle, then I can get rid of that annoying warning label with the material that I removed from the bottom of the handle. That is exactly how I would expect a thermoplastic to behave. It acts as though it's polyethylene. And so we can definitely reshape this handle. It's probably not warm enough to weld plastic in here, but I can try because I have an extra. My goal is to take some material from here and put it here. If you clamp your heat gun to another clamp, you can use it to rotate the heat gun in two different axes. And that's great to help keep your work warm. A little bit of heat makes it much more workable. Okay, here's a side-by-side. -side. That's what it looked like at the beginning, and this is the prototype. I've harvested plenty of material off of it for now, but baby steps at first. I can always do this again. So I was using a piece of coat hanger that's sharpened to a point and a pair of tweezers. Of course, normally I like to use a soldering iron. I use an old wood burner type soldering iron. But it's just too cold in here. This is not a failure. This is a complete success. Because from this point, I can easily take it over and sand it. But I think just to do a nicer job, even though as a proof of concept, I'm pleased with this. I'm going to wait for warmer weather before I do that. But just to show you so that you're on your way to doing it correctly, I'll show you how it looks when you sand it. Here it is. This is the tool that I usually use for plastic welding. Once this is nice and hot, you would use it to mar the finish of the piece that you're working on, and then you can also use it to smooth the uh, welding rod, for lack of a better term, the welding rod material, you can use it to smooth it out nicely. With some practice, plastic soldering is a wonderful skill. It can be incredibly useful. Just remember the secret to a good bond is to ensure that both the part that you're welding and the material that you're adding both have to have an equal they have to be melted about equally in order to really mix well and have a good bond.
I would do a neater job if this were the one that I actually cared about, but I just wanted to show you that it can be done. Oops, this sandpaper is dirty, but that's good. It will act like a stain. Hopefully I can give you a good view of it. Well, it's not perfect, but that's totally passable for what this is. And not bad for just playing around on a prototype. Well, this substance is definitely sandable, and that's great because that means you can remove this texture if you want to. Also consider that these shots are close-ups. I do that on purpose to make the flaws look way more pronounced than they actually are. In real life, this hatchet handle will be more than adequate. It's nice and smooth. Well, this has been quite a video. I've been using this hatchet for at least a month. And I think I've given you enough information by now that you can draw your own conclusions about it. I never did tell you exactly what my problem is, why I needed another inexpensive hatchet. It's because I have on the property a lot of these birch trees, or I'm sorry, beech trees. And the beech tree makes lots of these little tiny baby trees. And they're really invasive, and it's not a very pleasant tree, to be honest. I would prefer to encourage something more like maples and black walnuts and tulip, tulip poplars. I want to encourage a lot of different other trees, especially ones with fruits and nuts and woods that are useful to me. So I need a hatchet that I'm not afraid to just sink directly into the ground. And with that, let's call this one quits. Thank you for joining me. It's always harder on camera. Do it a hundred times in a row where you can split right down the edge of it make toothpicks gracefully, like you're a professional. As soon as you turn on the camera, forget it. <laughs> See you later.